it's Erica, and I really wanted to show you my Clyde binder today. It's my binder that I've been using as like a planner and a commonplace book all in one. So yeah, let's let's check it out. So this is the camel color. It's A5. Um, I got it on jet pens and I'll link all of this stuff below. But um, what I needed was some sort of planner because I hadn't been planning for the entirety of 2023 during my you know mental health break and I was trying to get myself together. But now that I'm feeling much better, I needed a planner. So I made my own. This is just some craft cardstock that I had lying around and I just formatted some designs or lay layouts I guess in my on my laptop and printed them out so this is just a quick glance at the last four months of the year and I left a little space at the bottom just to like write how I'm feeling going into that month and you know, like things to look forward to. It's kind of nice to do that. Uh, I also marked some special days during each of the months using my dot stickers. I just chose a couple colors that I'm really loving lately, a very muted and um, autumnal color scheme. So I have like all these little dot stickers that I'm using throughout this binder. So we'll just kind of go through it. And I just randomly assigned some colors that I thought would be fun for my, you know, my different days. Like birthdays, I just was like, oh yeah, 20 on the 25th, it's kind of like red because of Christmas and et cetera. So that's my little quick um, last quarter of the year at a glance. And then we go right into the monthly view. Now this one was a little bit tricky to figure out how I was gonna print it out on like different pages to make it all flow correctly, but eventually I got it right. Um, it was quite easy to format in pages, which is what I have on my laptop, on my Mac. Um, yeah, it's just like a table, and then I you know, typed in the date. But yeah, printing it out was a little tricky. This is my first time using uh, a ring binder as a planner, by the way. I've always been like a thread bound planner type of person. Got it, you know, get a notebook and do a bullet journal. This is, this is really interesting. It's, it's not my favorite thing to have rings between all my stuff. Um, so that's why this is temporary and I'll get into that a little later. But during my monthly view, I like to track just a few things. So I have these little dark red dots. You probably know what that is. If you know, you know. Um, but I like to track that so I can keep my energy levels and my mood um, at the forefront of my mind. Like, I don't want to overschedule during that time. I just want to honor myself and like, you know, be aware of when I'm not going to have as much capacity to do things. Um, yeah, so I've been tracking that for a while. And then I have um, social events, appointments, soccer schedule, and, you know, different things like that. Um, it's currently the middle of September, so I've got just a few things. And then I like to decorate my pages very minimally. Um, I used to do so much more stickering, but at this point, I'm just trying to keep it like just enough to keep me visually, you know, engaged, but not enough to overwhelm me. And the rest of the months I just have in consecutive order here. And as those months go on, I'll probably show you guys you know, what I've got going on in future videos. Then we get into the weekly pages and I'm really loving how I can customize each of my weekly pages to my needs when, you know, I have a long weekend and I only have the five days. And, you know, we it's different because now we have the kids and we can just like plan the activities. That's a different kind of weekly view than I usually need. 
And for the weekly view, I just put five things per day. It's whatever is unique to that day in the week. And I'll get into that in a little bit. So it's only been three weeks or so since I started using this. Less than that, like two and a half weeks. So this is all that I have for my weekly view. And I just print them out as I need to, like probably the Saturday or the Sunday before the week starts, I'll just print out a new weekly plan. And you'll notice that I type a lot of things because like while I format this on my computer, I just find it so easy to just like, so fast, just type out all the things that I need to do for the rest of that week. Because you know, I love my writing and I love the, I guess the mindfulness of writing. I've say that a lot in my videos, but like there's something just so efficient <laughs> about typing it, but I like having, my physical planner. So printing it out is a really nice uh, solution to that. Uh, what else do I have going on? What else do I wanna say about this? Um, I, oh yeah, when I can't get to something, I just cross it out. Yeah, I don't know, that's all I gotta say. This is my ideal routine page and I felt that I really wanted to just list everything that I gotta do every day. So that really helps me to like have something I can refer to so that if I need to, you know, if I'm feeling really frazzled, I didn't get a lot of sleep last night, I can check this so that I can make sure that I'm not forgetting anything vital before dropping the kids off at school, for example, because it's very hectic in the morning. So I really liked having just this daily checklist that I can refer to, and that way I also don't feel like I have to write certain things down that happen every day in my weekly view because I already have it on my daily routine page. And I love using this so much in this past couple weeks um, that I just typed everything out that I feel like I need to print it out and hang it up in several places around the house just so that I remember like my kids' shoes, for example. I forgot my kids' shoes like four times this year. So yeah, that's pretty important when you, <laughs> for your day, right? Um, yeah, there's no shame in just like listing out all the little things that you gotta do if you have a tendency to forget things, if they fall through the cracks. Then I have other like sections. This is kind of like time blocking in the day. Um, so I have like what you need to do to tidy and reset the house after the kids are in school. And then I have my work in the morning. And it changes every day, so I have, I know in general that I wanna be creative in the morning and do all of those tasks that require a lot of brain energy and um, whatever I'm doing that day, I can refer to my work section, which I'll show you in a bit. Um, then I have my little break in the middle of the day. Sometimes I go to the gym. Uh, I go like two or three times a week, really trying to get back into that routine. And then in the afternoon for work, I have, uh, it says to finish up any creative tasks and then I do administrative stuff. So like stocking stickers, packing orders, um, you know, stuff on the computer. And that's because I find myself like in that afternoon fatigue kind of mood. And so doing things that don't require a lot of mental energy is like really important for me. Then I, pack away on my work stuff and start getting ready for the evening routine. After the kids come back, we have our whole list of things that we need to do to get them squared away. And uh, this has really been just um, very helpful. I also have a different version of this for weekends and the days that kids are home from school. A lot of the morning and evening is exactly the same. We try to keep their schedules the same. Um, but of course, we're also doing activities and uh, you know trying to stimulate them as much as possible at home. So that's really helpful. I realize now that kids thrive on structure and routine and I am no different and my husband is no different. So that's been super awesome. Next, we're gonna get into my commonplace book section. So um, a commonplace book is basically somewhere you can put information and you know interesting things that you gather from all over the place. Um, yeah, let's let's just take a look and you'll probably it's probably easier to explain that way. 
So I, with the same uh, stickers that I have here, I have assigned them to different categories in my commonplace book. This is my color coding. Got a nice little muted rainbow going on here. So I've got um, tan is for mental health, and then I have a section for psoriasis. I don't have anything printed out for that yet, um, but I have psoriasis and I'm trying to do a lot of research on this. It's an autoimmune disease for those of you who are not familiar with it. And so um, it's closely linked to my mental health as well. Then I've got uh, orange for renovation. We've got a couple of maintenance things that we need to do in our house. Um, so I marked that with orange. Then gaming, which is um, very relaxed gaming. I'm not like a gamer, I would say. I play casually, like Animal Crossing, Stardew Valley, and like, you know, things that my kids like, um, Mario Kart, stuff like that. So anything that I wanna track, I will mark with yellow. I don't even have those printed out yet, but I will in the future. Then I've got gardening. Um, I have a little plot of garden beds in my backyard, so I want to do a ton of research and get back into gardening. This year it's very neglected, so I wanna do that research over the winter, and then by the time spring comes around, I will feel ready to really get back in there. Then I have blue for stationery, very important. <laughs> And then routines. I actually had that in my planner. You saw those pages just now. And then this muted pink is for work. And these are the goals that I have for commonplacing. So for me, I have so many different categories of my life. Um, I want to use this sort of like system in order to feel more organized and also to find connections between the different things that I'm passionate about. And I found this really enjoyable as well. And that is, you know, really important as well. All right, so uh, first we're going to check out a couple of articles. I just printed out these articles from uh, the School of Life. If you're familiar with them, um, you know, they're very philosophical. It's a, they have a channel here on YouTube and they have videos about mental health philosophy and um i don't know it's just like it, it proposes like very deep questions about life and i really enjoy their videos sometimes they're just very timely when they make a video about a certain topic so i just printed out the picture that they had accompanying the article as well and um when it came out so yeah I just, I really want to like read back on it, maybe highlight some things and write my thoughts in my journal about it. This one is really cool. It was about the um, mind and body connection, like physical health and mental health, the link between those, which I'm of course very interested in as someone who struggles with their mental health at times. And um, yeah, I really want to, pr you know, print out more stuff about mental health. Um, then I have this page, which is my lineup for 2024. As planner and stationary people, you probably know what a tacho kaigi is. It's the Japanese phrase for like reflecting on what kind of notebooks, planners, journals, and um, how they're going to fit into your life for the next year. Um, and so I just decided on a couple things. I don't know if this is set in stone, but because it's only September, I feel like plans change as you get further along in the year and get closer to January. But um, yeah, the next couple of pages are um, just my thoughts on how I want to use my planner that I ordered for next year. So yeah, this planner pages over here, they're actually temporary. Um, I ordered the Take a Note A5, and I'm really, really excited for it. Um, I, <laughs> I'm so excited. It ships in October. I got it from Yoseka Stationery in New York City. Um, so when that comes out, I'm definitely going to make a video showing all of the different pages. I've never used it before. I've seen, of course, other people using it, and it's just really intriguing to me because it's so unique. Um, I printed out like the different spreads that it has and the different views to try and decide like what I want to use them for. 
So I'll go into more detail when I get the planner and when I actually start using it. Um, but yeah, I really had to think long and hard about um, a couple of the pages. And yeah, the weekly view is what's really unique. It has a week across two spreads. So I really had to think about like what I'm gonna do because I've never really used a vertical weekly layout very efficiently and so that'll be new for me um yeah this is the bathroom renovation page that i just started we have a huge leak in one of our bathrooms and so we have to demolish the floor fix the leak not me my husband he's good at that kind of stuff and i'm better at the design stuff, although I'm not afraid to get my hands dirty and I have done a lot of maintenance work, um, but he, you know, it's t it's plumbing and you wanna get that right. So yeah, my husband is gonna do that. Um, but I do, I'm very excited about the design process. So yeah, I printed out some inspiration just to figure out what we want. And this is gonna take us a long time to do, so it takes a lot of planning as well. I just started this process, but yeah, wish us luck because this is a big undertaking for us. So I gotta figure out how I'm gonna do these pages. This is all very much, you know, a work in progress. And what's cool about it is you can add pages and take them out as you need them. And then I actually sectioned off the work stuff. And I just got back into doing work, so I don't have much in here. It's literally just this page. But my current focus that I'm doing for work is getting my shop to be reopened. So I have the a couple of ideas and like tasks that I need to do for that. And I imagine as time goes on, I will be adding more to that page or this section. And the rest of my notebook is just blank paper that I have um, stored up. Uh, yeah, and then I have another craft paper at the end to kind of protect those pages. So my overall thoughts, uh, yeah, I really think that it's working nicely so far. There's a couple of things that aren't perfect for me. Um, like one thing is I don't really like how there's rings separating my pages. Like I don't, the reason why there's no rings in the middle here is because the idea is you, you can put your arm across the page and like write without being obstructed, but I still find that it's obstructed and it's not as comfortable writing in the pages. Um, it's better to just take the page out and then you know, write what you need to write and then put it back in. And it's just a little bit convoluted for me. I'd rather have, I miss the comfort of just having a thread bound notebook. So that's a con for me is the rings are, don't, they don't make it comfortable to write in it. And then you end up having to take the pages out. Um, I do like the flexibility of it. Like being able to take out pages you don't like is really nice. Um, say you, mess up a page or you know you're not happy with the page you can just take that out and uh, replace it with a corrected one or with something that is more functional for you um, I like that you can move things about and you can section things off with uh, dividers or what are these called tabs I guess um, so, so for me, my conclusion is that I'm not really loving the planner part of this, but what I do love is the place that I can, you know, put all of my articles and my planning pages. I like having that in this book and I like really just typing it and being able to print it out and then adding pictures, notes, and things like that as I need. Very minimal decor decoration, but you can add as much as you want. I just feel like it's very, uh, it's very much like make it your own. You know, you can put your test sticker sheets in there or art and things like that. Yeah. Um, I'm liking the commonplace section a little bit more so far. Yeah. I feel like it's, um, I don't know, a little bit, less organized like for, for one thing 
I wonder if the color coding is even necessary if I just make enough dividers. You know what I mean? I mean, it looks really cute, but it's like, why not just have eight sections in the binder? So that's, that's something that I might change in the future so I don't have to sticker everything. But yeah, who knows? It's very new. You know, I've only been using this for the last two and a half weeks and that's what I have so far. But yeah, let me know if you have like a commonplace book. I feel like the typing is really useful for me because writing, I feel like I do a lot of my writing with um, like uh, creative or emotional stuff. Whereas with typing, like plans and um, less emotional stuff, like more objective stuff, typing it seems more efficient for me. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm liking about this system. I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but I'm using two types of paper in here. The blank pages that I print on are the Midori A5 uh, loose leaf paper. Midori, Midori. Um, I got that from Jet Pens as well. I got a pack of 100. And then these dot grid pages are from a notebook. It was a notebook that I got years ago to try and use as a bullet journal. Um, it was the Kokuyo Purple Nip, and I wanted to love it so badly because the paper is so buttery smooth and nice, and it has a four millimeter grid, but it's not thread bound, and the pages are only held together by glue, and they fell apart really easily. Like the more I turned the pages, it would just like come loose. So I decided to just take them all out, cut them apart, and then um, punch holes for my binder recently. I never throw away a notebook if or recycle it if um, I don't end up loving it. Um, I usually just take out all the pages and use it as scrap paper or paper to draw on or in this case um, pages for my binder. And I thought at the time that four millimeter was good for me but my handwriting has gotten smaller and smaller as the years go on. <laughs> so I think the Hobonichi like grid size or the take a note grid size is like perfect for me and that is like three and a half millimeters I think yeah um, I'm not sure it could be 3.7 yeah but I have the I don't want to waste this paper so I actually almost used up all the Kokoyo Purple Net notebook papers in here I think that's about it. Um, so that is my binder in a nutshell. It may change drastically as time goes on. So look out for an updated um, video on that later this year. And I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me today, checking out what I got for my binder. Um, let me know if you have any questions about it in the comments and I will see you all in the next video. Bye. Oh, before I go, one last thing I wanna do is make some sort of folder or something so I can stick random stuff in there that I haven't gotten around to pasting into my journal yet or commonplace book yet. So I wanna take this paper that I have and make like a little folder. So, yeah. Okay, bye for real. <laughs>